Hello everyone, my name is William and today I'm welcoming Adam Geller from UBC to talk about some of his experiences as a CS student at um, University of British Columbia. And so, Adam, you're currently a PhD student. Yeah. At, yeah. So, um, what, are, what, are, what is your field that you study and um, what is your field at um, CS actually? Yeah, so I, I study programming languages. So um, I think most people have heard of common ones like you know Java or Python. Yeah. But there's there's a really uh, rich, uh, diverse uh, ecosystem of languages out there. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, when you're when you're writing code, you're trying to communicate uh, some intended behavior right. to the computer. And so in PhD, how does it work? Do you like? go and choose a field and you work towards that field or? Yeah, that usually works? usually you're going to have an idea of uh, which field you want to be working in when you come into a PhD. So usually you kind of already yeah. have some background knowledge in that field. Maybe, in fact, usually you already have a little bit of like experience, experience. Uh, doing research in yeah. that area. Adam, um, actually, just touching on the point, you came from um, Washington State, so the University yeah. of Washington. Yep. Sure. So, what do you think um, the differences are? Partly, uh, I think one of the one of the biggest differences is in program size. And I'm not sure if this is true anymore, but at the time I was at University of Washington, the computer science program was in the scale of like a few hundred people, whereas at UBC, uh, it's in the scale of a few thousand people for undergraduate students. Honestly, I feel like most of the differences were in like my specific living situation, going from like living with my family, having a car mm -hmm. in kind of a more suburban area to, you know, living uh, in the city more and not having a car in an apartment. But on the flip side, uh, what's really great about Vancouver is the public transit. It makes no, it yeah. really easy to get around without a car, which is great. And obviously at Vancouver, you got this beautiful view you got um, in the summer, you can go swim in the ocean, uh, yeah. kayak, and in the winter you can go ski. I mean, how, how many places are in the world that you can do that? That's just... Not many. Not many. Yeah. Not many. So Adam, obviously you're a PhD student now, but uh, back a few years ago you were a high school student, right? like many of us. And what are some recommendations you have for high schoolers, and especially those trying to pursue ACS, um, CS degree or field? What are some tips you have for them? What a lot of uh, universities tend to say is that, you know, having background or experience with coding um, isn't, isn't, something they, uh, isn't something that will guarantee you admission. Um, it probably will, like, help your chances of oh, yeah. admission. Both have some things outside of school to do um, to, to put on your, and to talk oh. about. But I think... Um, I think for, for preparing yourself as opposed to, you know, preparing for school, mm -hmm. I think it is good to just try it out, you know, try out uh, programming on your own if you can or through your school, um, kind of keep an open mind about uh, what you might, up, might wind up doing. You know, a lot of people wind up doing some really, really cool and kind of outside of the box stuff once they get into computer science. Um, so um, actually, Adam, so what, what is your favorite thing about um the CS, your um, your PhD program, and what is your least favorite thing? Okay. I think my favorite thing is the people. Um, I've met a lot of people through my time here who, like some of them, I've become pretty close friends with, mm -hmm. and you know, a lot of the people I've enjoyed spending time with and, and really learned from, and there's kind of a, a mutual support um, from a lot of uh, graduate yeah. students. I mean, you know, I, I kind of started my PhD during COVID, so oh, yeah. that, that wasn't fun. That wasn't fun. Yeah. And you had um, to work from, well, study from home. Yeah. Sure. And, you know, I think there, there is something nice about working from home um, because, you know, I have my cat at home and I can oh, yeah. make food at home <laughs> and, you know, I have snacks at home. It's, it's <laughs> nice to be at home. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, uh, it's also nice to come into the lab. Um, but, yeah. And so, um, Adam, on the last point, would you say, like, describe a day in the life of yourself as a CS student? So I'm, I'm 
a little bit later into the PhD. You know, when you're when you're a master's student, you're usually still going to have classes, um, so your your schedule is kind of going to be determined by, around those. You know, if you have classes every day, you're probably going to be in the lab every day. But then usually you have a few meetings every week. You'll usually have like one meeting with your uh, supervisor, um, and then there are also reading groups. So you know you, you can wind up with a lot of meetings every week, and that's just that's just for regularly yeah. scheduled ones. Sure. You know, uh, students can can join committees uh, within the department, which is really cool, by the way, because um, you get you kind of get a glimpse into how the department works behind the scenes yeah. and such. It's, and you mentioned internships. Yes. So over here at um, let's see, so how how do you like how do they organize internships? As a graduate student, it's you really have a lot of freedom. You know, um, you can go for like a term. You could go for yeah, half a year, a year. Um, it's as long as you you and your supervisor are in agreement, you could you know kind of theoretically go whenever and for however long. A lot of opportunities out there. Yeah. I think a lot of choices. And so yeah, Adam, thank you for joining me today. It was a pleasure meeting you, and um, um, yeah. All the best for your future aspirations as a coder and also as an um, engineer. So thank you. All the best in the future. Yeah. Thanks, man. See you later. See ya. See ya. So this is mostly offices. Um, we got some main department office there. A bunch of uh, department staff and administration. And this is, this floor is mostly faculty offices. Faculty? Yeah. yeah. So like professors. It's like Java. Oh yeah. Python is sort of, kind of. Um, and then Racket is a very different type of functional one, so okay. a lot of people um, don't, don't appreciate it. Don't appreciate it. There's just like a bigger meeting mm -hmm. there. So this is another building, I'm assuming? Yeah, so this is like a... It used to just be the one side, but then yeah, they have all of the X-Wing. What's this? Yeah, it looks like a server room. Server room. That sounds good. That hasn't flooded yet, which is pretty good. <laughs> so most of these are on the first floor. But there are a bunch of these like project rooms, project room. um, which have like TA office hours, but also you can like have oh. an undergrad book the you phone, and some of it is like, you know, kind of getting more into like robotics and nice. more broad questions. It's very hot, but it's like a greenhouse. It really is, yeah. <laughs> Good over here. Yeah, it's really good. Well, we can go to the eighth floor. Oh, yeah. It's a really nice view from here.